Good day to you. Have you played around with the website Weibo? I think that's how you say it. You know, that's what the subject of our discussion is today. There it is. Yeah, I don't know which of our social media platforms you think it looks like the most. It's said to be the closest to Twitter, but it doesn't look that way to me. I'm not that familiar with Instagram enough to know. There's a video here. Let's take a look. All right, so that video is some kind of blog from, it's a headline, it might be a sponsored headline, it's a little bit tough to, t to tell, but it's a, a video highlighting protests at Australian universities that are apparently anti-China parades. Well, you would expect to, that, that's, that content would be more reflective of China if it's a Chinese-controlled social media platform like Weibo is, right? So that introduces what we're talking about today, and actually it's a little bit of a different class today because, as you know from my email, if you've read that, I discovered that I actually got an early start on this class with the readings, and I did my chapter one video on the first day of class when I should have waited till the second. So we're actually ahead of things, and I'm going to compensate for that for today for, for you by giving you three points for today's assignment and not requiring you to do the normal assignment. It'll all be explained in the email. Instead, what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to focus on my experience of Chinese social media by virtue of being in China. And I'm also doing that because the chapter is very redundant today of previous social media platforms that we've talked about, Twitter and Google. I will be making some comments about that as well. But first to China. You know, I spent uh, three weeks in China about five, six years ago teaching a class for ESU. And I was housed in a dorm. And like everybody else, I was shocked the first night there to get wireless and go on to Facebook and it just came back web page unavailable. That's because social media are blocked coming into China. Yeah, Western social media, I should say, or really any social media that's coming in with corrupting influences. So it's an interesting distinction to make between China and the United States in terms of the media and who is controlling the media because in China, the government has a strong hand in blocking just flat out blocking certain IP addresses and, and, and web platforms and social media platforms, software, anything that comes in that's said to have a corrupting influence on China. And yet the United States has blockages too, right? This is maybe a discussion for another class, but the blockages are more corporate. They're more corporate as well, which is not to say that China does not have corporations. In fact, if you read the chapter, you'll discover that China is about as capitalist as you can get. Yeah, China is actually a very capitalist country when it comes to the economy, but it is not so capitalist when you're coming to the government and the political system. So China, China being a very capitalist economy, has a social media context that's going to be very similar to ours, and that's what you will find throughout the chapter. you find throughout the chapter that the similarities in terms of the ideology, the power structure, the political structure, the political economy, all of those terms that we have studied so far in this class, all building into a critical theory, a critical theory for analyzing social media, all of those dimensions are very similar between China and the United States. Similar in terms of the audience as a commodity, commodity on Weibo. Similar in terms of Similar in terms of the Chinese economy allows some freedom of expression as long as it's not geared towards politicians. You can criticize other Chinese people on social media, but you can't criticize politicians. So there is some freedom there as well. That's similar as well. Also, both of these economies, these capitalistic social media economies, they accept foreign direct investment. They are export driven. They send their products overseas. They have boards of directors who are seeking capital accumulation. Yeah, it's capitalism, but it's just within the Chinese system. And so the Chinese system is a system that is different from the United States because of communism. Communism has the, has the, is the ultimate ideology, I guess you can say, in China. In the United States, you can say we almost have competing ideologies between, you could say religion is one, you could say that Capitalism is another, but in China, the, the macro ideology is communism. So you, ha you have a government in China that has no opposition party because the only legitimate political party is the Communist Party. So the Communist Party 
makes decisions that are in the best interests of the nation. That's what the people of China believe. If you talk to Chinese, they're not, they're not like, oh, we're controlled. Oh, our country is full of propaganda. Oh, we don't know what freedom is. They're not like that. They're like, no, the, the Chinese government knows what's best for us. They, they know, that, and our parents also know what's best for us. So we follow, not what we're told, but we follow the guidance of the Chinese government. As a, for example, in my dorm room, I used to hear this sound in the morning that I didn't understand. It was a ha, hoo, ha, hoo. And I thought to myself, what is that? So I went to take a look and I went downstairs and I found that that sound was coming from a series of speakers that were stuck in the ground along footpaths across the campus where I was staying in, in Shanghai, the University of Shanghai. And as I walked out there at 9.30 in the morning, I heard this lady saying, he, hoo, ha, ha, he, hoo, ha, ha. And that's what it sounded like to me. So I said, I'm going to figure out what this is. So I went back to the residence hall and I talked to the people at the front desk. And on my way, I was saying, you know, I, I, I'm sure that this is a, this is something military. This is the Chinese communist government preparing people for war. And they're getting them excited or they're getting them ramped up or they're getting them revved up or they're preparing them for a mindset for war. Some kind of a command, a central command structure going on there. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. When I talked to the people behind the desk, I found out that what that actually was, was the quote, Chinese exercise lady. The exercise lady who every morning at nine o'clock is broadcasting this and then there are networks of individual transmitters that send out signals like on this college campus to get people to do sit-ups and push-ups and jumping jacks at 9.30 in the morning to be fit. And that's part of a Chinese government initiative to keep people healthy and fit. Now you may say, oh, that's intrusive communism. That's violating the freedom of an individual. But then again, you take a look around at China and you don't see a lot of really overweight, weight heavy people. So is there something to government looking out for people if it's done right? Now that's for you to consider. They are larger issues and this is not a class on China. This is a class on social media, but because China is so uh, insulated from us, because we have such very little connection with China, even amongst the Chinese students that we have here at East Strasbourg University that you pass by every single day, we know so little about the country. So I want to set up a context that sets up a context that social media have every bit as uh, every are every bit as capitalized in China as they are in the United States. So that's it for today. Enjoy the extra time off and the points. Have a great day.